Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today is a very, 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 very special day as far as I'm concerned, because I am in a very privileged position to have received a very special bit of technology. And that is the world's first indoor reflective LCD computer display. Now, what is an RLCD or a reflective LCD? To cut the long story short, it is an LCD display that has all of the colors of an LCD, it has 60 frames per second, all of the benefits of an LCD that we like, but it doesn't glow at you, it doesn't have a backlight. What instead it does, the reflective LCD technology has a reflective panel behind the colors and it gathers the ambience light. While we have in the traditional display, we have tremendous efforts and energy expenditures in trying to combat the biggest light source that we have in our environment, which is our star, the sun. And that is a completely futile endeavor. So whenever you actually check out your battery consumption or anything like that with your phone, tablet, when you're outside or indoors, you will see that the greatest amount of battery consumption, like 70% on average, goes on to the display. And that's mainly because that display is, because of the technology as it is, is constantly trying to fight that light source. Even when you're not outside, it's still trying to fight it because you have the light bouncing around in your ambient environment. Reflective LCD is something completely different. It actually tries to use that light, the photons, the energy that we have in our environment, capture it and then illuminate the display using that uh, captured energy. That is something that is completely new. Primarily, they were focused on getting the this kind of technology for the outdoor signage, which makes perfect sense because those displays are constantly in sunlight or outdoors and therefore uh, this kind of technology makes perfect sense. But when some people actually got wind of what they are doing, they were inundated with the requests to create an indoor monitor using this technology as well. And that is what we have here now. The world's first indoor reflective LCD computer display. The one that I have here is a 32 inch uh, display panel. And I'm delighted to hear that two first batches of production units that they had were sold out pretty much immediately, which is a really, really good thing to hear for the technology. It's not a great thing to hear for the consumers, but it actually is because it means that this technology might actually gain traction, gain popularity. I think that's a very important thing to witness. Now, what is the benefit of this? Why would you prefer reflective LCD indoors? Maybe you think like, okay, I get it for the outdoors, but what's the point of it indoors? Well, if you are spending an inordinate amount of time in front of a computer screen, you're exposing yourself to an equally inordinate amount of unhealthy light being shined directly at your eye constantly. That causes all sorts of things that basically have a detrimental effect on your health over time. That doesn't mean that if you're just gonna look at the screen, oh, you're gonna die. No, not a link like that. But over a period of a decade or two or three or four, then that stuff has a cumulative detrimental effect on your overall health. From sleep patterns, from sleep dynamics to uh, blinking dynamics, eye dryness, eye soreness, weak capillaries in the eyes, all sorts of things. So that's point number one. And if you do have a display like this, it doesn't glow. It's actually illuminated by the same light in your environment. So your eyes do not have any additional energy being directed directly at them and therefore your entire face is more relaxed and your perception is more relaxed. So you're less prone to headaches, less prone to uh, eye soreness, dryness, etc., etc. The second benefit of this technology is the power consumption. And that one I've already talked about. So 
this panel is not battling the environment it is in. It's actually utilizing it and it becoming a integral part of that environment and the lighting conditions that you have. Now that in itself means that these panels in this kind of technology cannot be used in darkness, which makes perfect sense. So if your primary use case is, I want to use my display panels only in complete darkness, well then reflective LCD technology is probably not for you because it doesn't have a built-in front light, it doesn't have a built-in backlight or anything like that because that's not the point of this. We already have the other one, so we need to have this one on the other end of the scale. But when you have a panel that gets rid of the whole backlight thing, then you get a thinner device, you get a lighter device, and then you get the main power consumer of that panel out of it and out of the entire equation, which uh, which has a potential to have tremendous impact on how the technology will develop further on. I've been contacted by NVD over a month ago um, and we started to kind of talk a little bit about this. I didn't know who they are or what they're doing at first. And then when I kind of saw what they're doing, it was just like, oh my God, this is really, really, really cool. And I'm super interested in this. And I was lucky enough that they have sent me a review unit loan of their new 32 inch indoor computer monitor that's using the RLCD technology. Now they also had a really interesting idea which was because they've had feedback from their early customers that how big of a difference it is and how unexpected it the technology is, they suggested could we do a pre-interview with me, what I expect from the technology, what I expect from the device, etc. without ever even opening or seeing the device itself. Then I do my thing which is unbox it, review it, test it, test it, test it, bring the review to you guys and then we do a follow-up interview where we discuss the similar type of questions and basically just the impressions of the technology itself. Now, since this is something that I'm very passionate about and extremely interested in, that was something that actually made sense. So I'll pin it as a comment in this video and then you'll be able to actually watch that interview if that's something that you are interested in. Either way, it was a difficult thing to not open that box, but I, you know, I just put it in the shed and waited patiently. And finally, we have uh, concluded that pre-interview and now it's time to open that box up and check out the display. Display. So let's do that. All right, so this is officially the biggest <laughs> package that I've had to open on my deep guide um, because it is a, well, you'll see. But um, yeah, so you are seeing the same angle that you normally would see, just a lot more around it simply because I needed to place the camera, zoom out and do all of these things to kind of get this into the frame because it's a very large package. But hopefully, once I open it up, we will be able to zoom in to something more normal. But I am incredibly excited to open this up carefully. I don't want to damage anything. And take a look at this beast because I've been waiting for this type of technology for years, literally years and years. My goodness, this is huge. Hey, much lighter than I thought. It's not going to look super pretty because it's super huge, but the whole thing is to get it out in a safe way and also to see it at the same time. So let's move it like this and hopefully, yeah, this opens. So let's see what we see inside. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, this is thin. <gasps> I did not expect this. Check this out. <laughs> Here's my, this is, this is, Wow, okay, okay. So this is the first reflective LCD monitor. So let's just carefully move this panel out of the way and see what else do we get as contents. So you get the power supply and that's it. There's, there's no cables. 
but that's pretty much it. You get the power supply and I get the US power supply. So I'm gonna have to find an adapter for this. Okay. Uh, well, it is a US product, so <laughs> it's to be expected. All right, that's pretty much in the box. It's kind of, it's a little weird. There's like no user manual or cables or anything like that. But then again, I mean, when we're talking about a brand new type of technology, I'm I'm uh, I'm much more excited about that aspect, but it's definitely something to note. All right, so let's move this giant box out of the way and focus on the screen itself. And here it is, the redonkulousness of awesomeness, which is the SVD. 32 inch first ever reflective LCD indoor screen. So this is an amazing piece of technology. Just it existing for me is an amazing thing before even having the opportunity to see it because I have great hopes that it, sh if it does a fraction of what I hope it should do, then this is, this is an absolute game changer. So as I talked a little bit before about the, ref the, the, the reflective LCD technology, you probably are beginning to understand why that's such a big deal. So I'm going to try and do my best to just cover the physical aspects of this product, even though it's very difficult with the limited space that I have. But first and foremost, I am struck by the absolutely amazing build quality because I don't know if you guys understand this, but this, all of this, the entire construction is metal. So all of this, this entire panel is a metal construction and it feels amazing. It has chamfered sides, chamfered edges. There's nothing super sharp. Yeah, it, it just feels incredible. So it is a definitely a premium product. Full on metal construction, glass on top. There is a bezel. I'm going to take the protective foil off soon. And on the side, we have an HDMI in, and that is the only input that you have. So there is no USB-C yet. So this is only HDMI in capable device. And we have um, some LEDs here, some diodes. I know we have a power button plus minus button menu and an enter and these are all on the back i guess we have yes we have a swivelable uh foot which has a really nice kind of a pressure thing and the edges while they are not fully kind of rounded they're not too sharp so they are uh, machined in a good way so it's nothing too bad it is a metal hinge so it's definitely in a metal foot it's definitely able to hold the device and the hinges are very nice and precise so they give a very very good feel and feels sturdy enough to support the weight of the device itself uh, next on the back we have these uh visa standard mounts i'll have to double check there's no documentation but i'll measure it out 200 200 by 80. Well, i'm used to 75 so maybe maybe that's a 75 and i'm measuring wrong usually it's normal 75 but it looks like it's 200 by 80. i'll double check with them uh what kind of a mounting standard that is and on the uh, left hand side we have a metal power button that's a push in push out and oh it just feels so good it has a lovely lovely round this is an incredibly premium product this is ridiculously good and you have a power supply again a metal jack so you have a metal jack for power supply metal power button with the metal frame around it it's impressively built so Let's see how does that hinge work because it's going to be interesting to whoo, cool. All right, so I can just put it like this. You know, this 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 thing is I can't get over 
just how good of a build quality this is this is like a monolith type of a design the 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 thinness here and the edges let me just get it to the camera so you can see look at the manufacturing quality here it's so precise and so so nice did not expect this at all because traditionally no <laughs> quote unquote normally yeah the, the the screens are like plastic with some metal or something like that nope this thing is full-on metal so yes it has some weight definitely i'll weigh it so that i know how much weight it has so it's not super light but then again it's it's a very robust type of a thing all right so let's uh take the protective screen cover screen protection off just to see the panel itself so let's do that and there we go so now that's taken away and we can see that you have a very thin bezel very thin indentation almost non-existent indentation and something that's really interesting so there's one plastic part which is the bezel around the screen itself is made out of plastic but the color is matched between the metal and plastic really really well so you can only feel it by touch whether something is cold or not to the touch and then you have the screen itself the magnificent reflective lcd screen itself so it can use 240 volts i just need to find an adapter here so that i can plug this in and then give it a first impression kind of test because first impressions design wise manufacturing wise quality wise are incredibly impressive so i'm gonna rummage around for that converter and come back shortly all right back from the store i actually had to get the uh, travel adapter because i normally have uk till eu i didn't have a us uh, till eu so let's get this guy plug it in and finally see how does the reflective lcd technology look like the first ever reflective lcd indoor panel in the world all right ready let's plug it in all right so i plugged in the screen to the power using hdmi to my laptop and i just wanted to have like a, a, a frame on the screen itself and um, the moment when i first power it up so that um yeah so that uh, we can see how does that look like and all of that kind of stuff and i just for myself i wanted to kind of uh, uh, commemorate the occasion the very first time i see an uh, reflective lcd actually it's here there is a power button here yeah all right definitely powering up and Okie dokie. So, all right, we have this kind of a thing. Let me just open up here to have more of a thing. All right, so I turned off the backlights. This is really, really new. I gotta say, this is very, very different. So you do have the glass or whatever it may be on the front. I don't think it's glass. It's not cold. I don't know. It's not glowing at you because you can clearly see this is the LCD glowing. And this one, when you put a shadow on it, it doesn't glow at you anymore. And what's really different is well basically everything <laughs> all right so let's uh let's try just a couple of things a couple of normal things and see so the refresh rate is super fast so we got 60 frames per second no ghosting whatsoever and it's not glowing at you um i gotta say that this is a very very different sensation and it just is <laughs> oh my god this is so cool it's really difficult to explain it doesn't happen often that i find it quite difficult to kind of put things to words obviously there's menus and stuff on the back to kind of do these things but this is just the first impression and this is my first time to actually be 
in contact with uh, with a technology like this. Um, so let's see how does a full-on trailer look like. Yeah, my God, <laughs> this this is uh, this is quite something. I, I know I'm no I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry. Maybe that's just my fault that I've turned it on. Here's a comparison, like the same thing, just to kind of see the brightness. This one's like quite bright. So let's put it down to a middle, which is like a normal. And you can see the difference. Actually, I prefer the new display, obviously, because it doesn't glow. Yet you are able to see the image on it. It's, um, you know, <laughs> You know what it looks like most to me? Like cinema image. When I go to the cinema and I... Yeah, that's that's basically it. That, that's definitely the type of uh, impression that I get. Maybe because the canvas in the cinema is not glowing at you, but something is actually the projector is projecting a light source on it. So maybe this is exactly why I'm getting this impression, but it most definitely is a completely different experience. So now let's see what it does when I roll the curtains down and see how sensitive it is to the light. All right, I did not expect this. This, I genuinely don't understand how are they able to capture photons. This is like genuinely a dark room right now. So a quite a dark room, yet it is able to capture photons from the ambient light and it's so sensitive. You know what's really crazy? Is that because it's reactive to the the ambience light it's in perfect synchronicity with the room and the ambience that you are in and your eyes are simply relaxing and this is this is <laughs> okay the sharpness is awesome despite it being a 1080p display for a 32 inch uh, screen when you have normal distance between it, it just looks really great. There's a tiny bit of a lag, for example, here. So, yeah, see, there's a bit of a lag, but that's uh, usually that's what happens with the HDMI out. That's something that I've noticed, but this might be a little bit more. I'm not entirely certain. Some of the colors are a little bit exploded. Yep, I accidentally left it on Vivid which explodes a little bit of colors. Now when it's on standard, it has the same type of sensitivity that you had here. And already now, I can tell you that this, this is exactly what I was hoping for it would be. This is absolutely amazing because it is, ev uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a problem here. I'm gonna have a problem returning to a regular display. It's what you see, basically. It's a brand new type of technology that is able to capture the ambient light and keep the display in your room and let the picture that you're looking at belong to the environment that you are in thus not straining your eyes. And now when I'm looking back from this image to this one here, I mean, the camera can't really capture the, the, the difference, but you can see the difference in brightness, obviously. But there's a difference between how my eyes are re reacting when I'm looking at this, because I'm able to relax more and perceive more details here on this one because it's not glaring, the whiteness is not glaring at me and the, it's just far more natural. So obviously, if you are working with color dependent things, so you have to have a color calibrated screen, then this technology can't do that, most definitely. 
but um, today is a completely cloudy day outside and I'm in a very darkish room with a you know semi occluded window and yet it still works and that's what blows my mind because I expected it to be I expected it to be darker to be honest I didn't expect it to be exactly what the what the environment is this screen allows it to match your environmental conditions and that is something that we have never had before no other technology allows for that kind of thing e-ink yes that was the whole point of it but e-ink can dream of 16 million colors 60 frames per second and all that kind of stuff so this 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 is a whole new world basically out here and on top of that it's built the way it is obviously it's not for as i said color color dependent type of work where you have to have color cal calibrated screens because well maybe maybe you could actually get used to it maybe it's even better for that i don't know i really don't know because this is genuinely new this is absolutely something completely new and yeah let's uh let's sign off with some beautiful images from the earth from above and i think i'm just gonna kind of relax a little bit with this and take in this whole new thing because it's it's gorgeous let me just shut down the image brightness on the other one completely so i can focus Mm, this is wow 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 i mean that it, it it's an lcd display but you know i don't know if it is because it's that type of an lcd i don't know if it is because there's it's a completely new different type of technology but for a lack of a better word the image pops at you because the colors are the ones that are glowing not the screen so it, it, it's just very 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 different type of an experience and something that is already exceeding my expectations and my expectations were very high so this is a really really proper jump in, uh, in 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 display technology this this is a huge deal So I moved the screen and I'm now holding the camera by hand so that you can see it a little bit better because my uh, the, 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 the stand can't reach this. But I just moved the screen closer to the edge of the table so that it can capture a little bit more light and it's not like tucked away all the way back in the... But look how natural this is. This is, this is the... <laughs> It looks like a moving painting. It... <laughs> this is ridiculous. That's usually the dark corner. And this is now just... Look, compared to the arm. The lighting conditions of the arm and... The lighting conditions of the screen. This is something... Utterly and completely different and new. And this, at least for me is an absolute game changer. I will not be able to look at computer screen technology the same way again. 
and that's what I hoped it to be. And this, the first reflective LCD display, uh, indoor reflective LCD display, is most definitely delivering. Okay, um, you know, I always try to be objective and that's why I'm gonna try and be reserved, but uh, the, it, it's difficult to be reserved with the first impressions of something as new as this is. So for me, as I commented, it's very, very different than anything else. It's, it's difficult to describe. I'm really surprised at how 
versatile and how much more usable it is because for example after filming of the footage that you've seen with the, uh, the, the the trailers and all that kind of stuff by basically running on the display just checking it out I had an idea like okay well why don't I fire up a video game and test that out and see how that works and um, I played the grid legends of just a racing game which is something that I enjoy and uh, to my surprise I ended up playing an hour and a half which was supposed to be just to try it out an hour and a half in completely not optimal conditions without any problem at all and then i experienced something of a different experience because for me at least i don't know fully why i'll have to analyze that and think about it as i use the screen more uh, but it was more immersive because of the lighting because it's not glowing at me because the whole panel is so huge and it was so close and it was part of the environment the 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 impression that i already said was the image seems to be more up front physically more closer to the surface than what we are used to now i suspect that that might actually be true i don't know but that is the impression that i got now is this a gaming monitor no of course not because you won't be able to do your first person shooters because of the hdmi delay and all of that kind of stuff so definitely like a competitive monitor no but a racing game is a twitchy little thing as well so you need to have reflexes and i didn't have any any problems whatsoever and that's like if you're talking about strategies and uh, uh, building simulations or anything like that then this absolutely works and that completely took me by surprise because that was the last thing I expected this technology and this monitor to be able to do right off the bat because let's not forget this is the very first of its kind usually the firsts are the place where you offer technology and then you see what happens and then you collect the feedback and then you improve upon it and all of that kind of stuff and sure already now there are some things that i'm going to be testing out and discussing in the in-depth review when that comes out things that can be improved etc but overall the first impression i'm absolutely blown away by the technology yeah the price is going to be super high for this kind of thing which is 1500 dollars so 1500 dollars super high but how much does a 13.3 inch e-ink monochromatic slow display cost? Around a thousand dollars, depending on which one you get and which model you get. This is a 32 inch full colors, 60 frames a second display panel. It, it's not really a comparable thing, but there's also a difference. The other ones are portable monitors. This is not a portable monitor. This is a computer indoor desktop screen. So it's not exactly something that you can directly compare yet but as far as the technology goes and the potential of the technology um that this 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 is as far as i'm concerned this is the way to go for me so we'll see how this actually uh, moves forward and what are the benefits what are the comparisons and how that actually goes and and i've installed it here on my desk so that i can have a different setup and so that i can use it on a daily basis over the course of a couple of weeks while i'm being testing it so i'll try video editing on it normal life with a reflective lcd indoor computer monitor all right so yeah what's what's the what are the first impressions mind blown completely you know there's that gift that i really love the one that goes yeah that one so um yeah that's my first impression and that's why i want to spend time with this to let that kind of eagerness kind of settle down so that i can introduce uh, more <laughs> objectivity uh, throughout the experience of using it on a day-to-day -day basis i hope you like the video and i'm really really interested to hear what do you guys think about this kind of technology because this is something that's genuinely new so yeah shoot your comments down below it's going to be interesting to get a discussion also if you like the video please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell it does help the channel also in the description down below you will see the links for the mdo my daily organizer product and the playlist uh, what is a made daily organizer it's your daily weekly quarterly monthly yearly organizer that helps or you organize your professional or personal uh, obligations or whatever it may be and using those links you can actually check the playlist most importantly to check the videos and see if that is a product that might suit your needs or not 
Also in the description, you will find a link to the My Deep Guide Discord server, which is a community of people who love this type of technology of e-ink users and the, you know, alternative technology kind of approach. And that's where we kind of get together, share ideas, share experiences, share um, questions and all that kind of stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would like to be a part of, then you are more than welcome to join. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.